I've been speaking with uh, a dear, dear friend and previous client of mine, Kurt Welling, who's had uh, three careers <laughs> in his life. Um, and we're going to fast forward to where he is in his life today. However, we, right before the break, we were talking about sort of the juxtaposition of when I first met you at AmeriCares. And uh, I was trying to help you think about the culture you really wanted to thrive going forward and how people were feeling in that culture. And what I tended to notice was that you didn't always tune in to what was going on in the room. You didn't really pick up the emotions or prioritize them, I would say, you know, because you had such clear visions about the future of what you wanted. And then we moved um, to talk about the adoption of your children and, and to watch how gracefully you moved into the depth of talking about what that was like. I remember being in your home, Kurt, and uh, we were sitting in your living room and I was doing your emotional timeline because you know that I think that we need to examine our childhood and to predict how we show up as leaders later in life. And when I was doing that story, you were sharing the part about getting adopted and I asked you, it's still a poignant moment in my memory of what that was like for you when you learned you couldn't have children. I remember how poignant that was. And I remember you saying, I did what men did at that time. And that for me, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't ask you a lot about that. And yet now, when I ask you about those things, there's a depth to what you divulge. Um, and, and what you ask about, for example, me, and my life and and people and you're a spiritual man too you're a religious man too and um and that hasn't come out you know but there's such a depth there was i believe a moment at americares where the worlds collide you know sort of collided of your love of children and and maybe darfur could you tell that example of what happened sure, for sure. you sure and um so it's important to put this in the timeline. So this is after we'd been working together. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, and, and I say that because I think about what my reaction might have been mm. at that moment versus what it ended up being. Mm. Um, so uh, I think people might remember that there was a crisis of refugees and a humanitarian crisis mm. in a part of Sudan called Darfur, which really came on the world's radar screen in 2004. And um, we, because that's one of the things that AmeriCares did, was mobilize to deal with those kinds of crises. We loaded up a very large plane and flew it from London to Benghazi to this place in the middle of the desert. And I remember the first encounter I had with this crisis was looking at a refugee camp of 100,000 people. Yeah. So as far as the eye could see, there were these little mm. makeshift huts. Yeah. Uh, some of them were the blue tarps that you're familiar with seeing. And, and the next day we went into the camp and the camp was primarily populated by women and children because most of the men had been killed. Mm. And I remember thinking the kids were just kids. Yeah. They were absolutely irrepressible, mm. joyous, playful, happy in the middle of this unspeakable thing. Mm. And I remember shortly after that, I had to do a, uh, a video shoot because they wanted to capture some impressions for, uh, uh, for our archives and for use later on. And uh, all I could think about was these kids mm. and my kids. Mm. And, 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 and so I had this Someone said, well, why should people in the United States and Europe care about these people? And I said, you look around here and you see these kids. And then you realize that every day, hundreds, if not thousands of them are dying. Mm. And the question is not, why should you care? The question is, how can you not care? Mm. And I remember vividly that the depth of that feeling was sort of a spontaneous, you know, it was no script. Yeah. The depth of that feeling was that moment of thinking, these kids are just like my kids. Mm -hmm. Now, at that moment, it doesn't really matter whether they're biological kids or adopted kids. Absolutely not. They're just kids. kids. Yeah. 